Hello guys and welcome to this video. In this video we are going to be doing a tier list for all the supports for Nile in season 14. So what are we waiting for? Let's get to it. First character on our list is Alistar. Alistar is an amazing character. It provides good healing, good peel. Uh, enemies can't dive you. Uh, it, it provides good engage, do, good disengage. Amazing character of Nyla. Another one on the list is gonna be Amumu. Amumu is an amazing character, a little bit worse than Alistar of course, but it's still a really, really great support. It can look for great engages at level 6 and you can easily melt the enemies. Bard. Bard is one of the worst supports that you can get with Nyla. He doesn't provide much value in the laning phase. At the same time, he's leaving you 1v2 all the time and you're not gonna have a great time playing with Bard. Blitzcrank. Blitzcrank is definitely an S tier and a little bit above the Alistar because he provides a hook and if you get a hook on the enemy AD carry you can easily melt him down because you have two dashes and uh, yeah it's gonna be really, really nice to have a Blitzcrank support. Brand. Brand is a little bit better than Bard but it doesn't offer you that much. His CC is kinda hard to land because he needs to uh, put F spell beforehand so you need to like EQ right and a lot of bards don't EQ at the same time at the same time the, the Q is kinda easy to sidestep and uh, like it's obvious when he's gonna be throwing it so it's even easier to sidestep it at the same time it's an AP character and Nyla doesn't do with AP characters that well. Rome a solid B tier in the middle. He's not like top tier, but he's an amazing counter pick depending what enemy picks. So if enemy picks something like Blitzcrank, Braum gonna be an amazing counter pick. So it's a situational pick, but most of the times he's not gonna be that good and he's not gonna be that bad. So we will put it in the middle tier. Galio. Galio is a little bit above the Braum because he has engage. He has really, really good CC on his W, right? He also has quite a bit of pressure in the lane from the Q poke so yeah I like Grag uh, I, I, I not Gragas I like Galio support quite a bit another support on our list is gonna be Gragas Gragas is gonna be a little bit above the brand but it's same down below the Braum he's kind of a niche pick you don't you're not gonna see Gragas supports that often let's be honest but when you get a Gragas support uh, it depends on the player to be honest but it's a decent C tier support Janna. Uh, this is a little bit controversial. I would say C tier above the Gragas, but like uh, she doesn't offer you much in laning phase, but she's amazing in mid to late game. So like it depends on the Janna player as well, because a lot of Janna players just tilt in laning phase because you don't provide a lot of pressure, because they get frustrated with you and it depends on the Janna player quite a bit, but like in general, I do not like having Janna as my team, but like I would prefer a Janna over a brand, so I will put her in C tier. Karma. Karma gonna be a solid A pick, definitely not an S tier, but like above the Momo for sure. It offers you shielding, it offers you a lot of pressure from the poke. It's the only AP support that I actually like playing with because she has slows on Q, she has a great poke, she has a root on her W, she has a movement speed on E, and that empowered R poke is really nice as well. Leona, definitely an S tier, a little bit below the Blitzcrank, there we go. I would rather have Blitzcrank than Leona, but Leona is like an amazing character and I love playing with Leona because how straightforward her kit is. So you just land 1E, you follow with Q, Nila jumps in and you get a kill. So it's a really straightforward lane and it's kinda easy, so I definitely like Leona. Lulu. Lulu gonna be a little bit above the Braum but below the Galio like it's a really nice support like it offers you a lot of shielding it offers you a lot of CC the polymorph is really strong the Q slows are really, really nice as well in any phase but like yeah it's not 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 like A tier like I would rather have Galio and some engage or a Momo for RCC than a Lulu uh, so uh, Lux Lux actually gonna be S plus tier and it might sound weird, but like, she's amazing with Nyla. She has one of the highest win rates right now. Like, Lux, Nyla has like 60% win rate. And you might ask like, why? It's an AP mage. Like, AP mages are not that great with Nyla. So why is Lux so amazing? Just because of her burst that the bot lane offers. So literally the Lux lands 1Q, throws E, throws R. Like, he's 1 HP, you just come in, EQ, and you collect the kill. Like... 
it's so easy to punish your enemy team and it's so easy to burst them down so at the same time the the bot lane duo has one of the highest win rates with nyla so we have like 60 percent win rate together even through it sounds weird but like she's doing amazing with nyla maokai maokai is even more above the lux because of his point and click cc it's an amazing support it currently has 58 percent win rate in the support role it's Truly an magnificent, magnificent support. And whenever I get a Maokai, we just literally run down the enemies like it's no other. Organa, a really niche pick. I would say like above brand. Yeah, above brand sounds about right. Like she's not that great. She's Q reliant. Her spell shield is kind of niche. Her W doesn't do damage. Her R is kind of hard to actually see the enemies with. So definitely I would put her in a D tier. Nami. Uh, Nami is not that great either. Like, it depends on the Nami player as well. But from my personal experience, she's a solid D tier. I would rather have a Janna than a Nami because, yeah, Nami doesn't feel like she offers much in the laning phase, especially with Nyla because you're short range and you're. And her E, even through like. It seems like we should synergize really well with Nihilus Kid, but like it doesn't offer as much, for example, as a Lucian Nami, right? And Nami in general with Nyla didn't feel that great for me. Nautilus. Nautilus is a definitely an S tier pick. I would say, yeah, in the middle of that, somewhere like there. Uh, definitely an S tier pick. One hook into auto, into point and click. Uh, knock up into e slows like it's an amazing character and i love playing with a good nautilus pantheon pantheon is above the karma it's a point and click cc he offers a lot of burst you can burst down the enemy lena quite easily the problem is he needs to commit himself not like lux who throws the q from like long range he needs to commit himself and of course some pantheons gonna be committing early on and you're not gonna have great time because of that pike i would definitely say like between s plus and s tier pike is an amazing support with nyla whenever i get a pike we just dominate the lane like we're doing really really amazingly we're literally just looking for those hooks make sure that the wave is uh, literally next to our turret and yeah we just fish for hooks and if a hook lands follow with e we follow up with e as nyla and that's a kill rakan rakan is literally my one of my favorite supports to play with bot lane he has healing he has engage he has shielding he has cc on his r which is literally like him running into it and ccing them it offers everything that nyla wants so it's a definitely an s plus tier uh, okay rel uh, i would say rel is somewhere here like i would rather have alistair and rel yes it's kind of good support but like in season 14 meta i feel like rel is way weaker like if it was literally season 13 i would probably put her like s plus or like top s tier but right now she's still a solid support but at the same time she lost quite a bit of power senna I would say Senna is around here. She's an S tier pick, but you need to adapt your playstyle to her as well. You need to make sure that you're not playing too aggressively early on. You need to make sure that she's stacking safely. Make sure that she doesn't overextend. You're literally just babysitting her throughout the lane while she's stacking up, and then she will carry a game later on. Seraphine. Ooh, that's a tough one. I would say I rather have Seraphim than a Lulu, so I will put her in B tier. B tier is a solid pick, uh, tier for her. She's like a middle pig. She has some damage on Q. She has some healing with W. She has some shielding with W. She has root on E, but at the same time, it's kind of easy to sidestep, so it's not that consistent. Her R is kind of. And her bread and butter, right? Like the R. Chain CC that throws through allies to extend his range, like, feels quite nice. Set. Um, B tier, right? Set is quite good, but quite niche, right? So it depends on the player quite a bit as well. I played with a few sets, like, they did okay, but at the same time, like, I would prefer, like, Braum over it, but at the same time, I would rather have Set than Janna, so I will put him in a B tier. Shaco. So it depends right now. So, right now, Shaco, if it's AP Shaco, 
then he's gonna be really annoying and really hard to deal with throughout the game right so definitely like uh, B to C tier like I would rather have Janna than Shiko I think to like C tier something like this like um, the thing is like AD Shiko slaps her heart early on right and then you can look for those all in engages with him and it's kind of easier to find angles the AP Shiko is quite annoying with laning phase but a lot of people just go sweepers so like uh, C tier is like a nice balance Shen Shen is definitely gonna be somewhere right about here B tier it's an amazing support he has engaged with E he has um, auto attack block on W so yeah it's decent pick he has a global shield as well which is quite nice but it still doesn't offer as much as other supports above uh sona sona is actually an amazing pick and i would say like right here in the middle it's definitely an s tier even through it doesn't feel like she's doing much but she's doing a lot off screen like literally you don't take consideration how much uh, sauna actually does for you it does it provides you great poke in laning phase it provides you shielding healing moving speed and as you see that's pretty hard to dodge because it goes off pretty fast so like it's definitely a stair pick the problem is most of the times you're gonna get punished in laney phase so your wave management needs to be per pixel perfect because if you're gonna mismanage your wave you're gonna get dived or you're gonna get poked down under turret and then you're gonna be too low and then it's not gonna be a great time for you soraka the thing with soraka i feel like she's somewhere above here like i would rather have blitz than soraka but like at the same time soraka is an amazing pick like she provides so much healing you can do anything you want in the lane phase especially in the hard lanes when they're poking so hard that soraka's healing gonna be amazing so uh, definitely an s tier plus mid into late game you know how difficult it is to deal with soraka she has so much healing she has a global ult she can influence the fights around the map like she has so much potential so much potential to carry so definitely an s tier pick Tarek, you know Tarek, S plus straight up, like come on now, it's literally the best of the best pick with Nyla. Whenever you get a Tarek, it's literally just game over, right? Infinite scaling, literally infinite scaling with a R, right? Um, a, a freaking stun on E that synergizes perfectly with Nyla's kid because you can dash in and then he E's and then boom, that's a stun. A, a shield on W, insane healing to the point where he can even 1v1 AD carry. It's so funny that that happens. And yeah, it's just S, S plus tear, like it's an amazing tear. Thresh, Thresh is kind of weak actually right now. Like, I would I would put him somewhere here. I don't know, he felt maybe even A tier. Like he doesn't feel that good anymore. Like at season 13 he was a menace. It was so hard to deal with him. But right now, let's be honest, you don't see Thresh's that often. Like we don't do as much anymore. Like I don't know what changed, the meta changed, but like it didn't change well to him. And he doesn't feel like a really, really strong pick anymore. Like back in the day. I saw a Thresh, I was so happy. Now I'm kinda... Okay, that's not bad, I suppose. But like, I'm not excited about it. Velkos. Velkos gonna be a solid C tier. I would rather have Gragas than Velkos. Uh, it's, I'm a little bit generous to Velkos because of his R, let's be honest. Like, the Q poke is kinda nice. The W poke is kinda nothing. His E is basically... You do, you just combo her his E with his W, right? And the R is like his better and better at... That's why I'm putting him in C tier. Vex, I would say a D tier, like maybe even an F tier, but like I would rather have Vex than a Bard. So like it, it offers some CC, right? Some CC, some poke, right? And an R engage, so could be worse, could be worse. Uh, Zeraf, I'm gonna be putting him a little bit above. Yeah, above Velkos, but it's a C tier. It's not a greatest support of Nyla at the same time. Like, he can be some, a good pick in some niche scenarios where he can actually poke for free and have prior, but in general, it's not the greatest. Uh, Yumi, ooh, Yumi, I would say a decent A tier. Like, definitely not an S tier pick, but above Trash, like. Yumi feels so great in mid to late game, especially when you're ahead, right? In laning phase, it's a little bit hard to survive, but in general, you should be fine if your game management is correct, so you should be alright with that. Zillion. 
I heard a lot of controversy about Zerlian, like, oh, it's an amazing pick because of a uh, double XP synergies, so on and so forth, but like, let's be honest, he does not offer much, right? So, I would even put him like below Nami, like, Nami is definitely a better pick than Zerlian. And yeah, it doesn't offer you that much, like the Q poke is kinda nice, that point and click slow, like he's not gonna get into a point that often because you're a melee character, and his R revive is kinda decent as well, but yeah, it doesn't offer you much, and most of the cases you're just gonna get dived, you're gonna get killed because you don't have pressure in lane, and later on mid to late game, I did not see his impact that much either. Zyra. Zyra is kinda weak, kinda weak, but like... I would say, like, I would rather have Zyra than Brand Vex, but Morgana already outshines him, and even Zillion outshines her, so, yeah, she's a decent D-tier pick, like, she's not that great with Nyla, let's be honest, she doesn't offer you that pressure, uh, you're basically gonna be pushed in, she doesn't find good angles to poke, uh, she takes a lot of minions with her plants, Yes, you might argue, oh, there's some Zara players that would never do that, but, like, I'm t talking about, like, in general, right? In general, the Zyra did not feel that great for me. Tam Kench. Actually, you you might be surprised, but, like, Tam Kench is actually a solid pick. She, uh, he's a B tier, like, he has good poke with a tongue, right? He can he has CC after, like, certain licks, right? He has a uh, Knocka with a W, and he has literally like double HP, triple HP bar because of the healing from the E and the shielding from the E. Plus, he can eat you at any point. So like you can go in the middle of a fight, he goes with you with a W, and then you just fight it out in the middle, your low HP just eats you, you know, like, you're fine, you're chilling. So, yeah, it's a decent B tier, definitely a B tier. Vagar, oh, Vagar, 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 where do we put you, Vagar? Vagar is kind of weak, but at the same time, like, he offers some amount of damage. I would say F tier. has some scaling, and he has, like, E, but at the same time, like, he doesn't offer you that much. Like, I would even rather have Bard than Vagar support, to be honest. Like, it does not do that much, so... Yeah, let's just put him in F tier. Like it's it's not a it's not a support character, let's be honest. He's gonna be better off in mid lane or AP carry bot lane, but like as a support, like he just doesn't offer much, right? Okay, you land the you, you land the cage, right? How am I gonna actually go in and punish? Like, I'm not gonna be able to do that, right? At the same time, he's not gonna be able to like step up and constantly poke because he's not gonna have like a range support. So, yeah, definitely not it. Definitely not it. Renata, Renata is a solid, solid A pick, but like I rather have Yumi than Renata, I suppose. Like the thing is, her kit is kind of nice. She has a lot of pressure in lane, but like she's definitely not an S tier. At the same time, Yumi offers like a lot of healing and shielding and bonus damage, right? Renata offers you a Y, which is really amazing, so she's definitely a solid pick, but not to the point where she's like S tier, like, I would rather have a Sona or Nautilus or Blitz or Soraka than a Renata. Swain. Oh, I love Swain, but I would put him below a Lulu. Swain is amazing support, he can 1v2 the lane, so it depends on your elo as well, but in the higher elos... It's not as great because he's easily kited, you just need to play around his R, play are more aware of his R, so in lower divisions he definitely would be a A tier, right, but in lower in higher divisions I'd definitely put him in B tier. Fiddlesticks, ooh, I like Fiddlesticks quite a bit, so I will put him in a low A tier actually, like Fiddlestick support is amazing. Why is that? Because of his R. It gives the enemies PTSD, they can't pressure properly, they can't play the game, they're literally scared of getting ulted at any point of the game, so it's quite funny to see how enemies are literally giving you like full pri lane prior just because they don't know where Fiddlesticks is, so it's an amazing pick. Nico, I love Nico. Nico is an amazing support, you can get so many cheeses. Her, actually, I'm actually gonna put her in S tier. Like, just below the 
so now like she's an amazing support she's an amazing support i love nico so much she has cc so she has poke she can turn into a minion she has an amazing global r that one one not one moment that enemies are not aware that you're a minion and you can land that five man r and then nyla can follow up with r like it's an amazing pick i love nico so much and yeah let's move on zach zach is definitely like a solid a tier uh, it's an amazing support she, he has great engage he has great damage he has great ultimate it's a really, really solid support with nile misfortune misfortune doesn't offer you much like it's definitely an f tier like it doesn't offer you much like if it's ap misfortune like just play around in her e and like it's not doing much for you if it's ad like it's not gonna do anything to you as well uh, so it's definitely an f tier ash is definitely f tier i would rather have ash than bard but like still doesn't do anything right uh jen jen is actually f tier i mean self-explanatory it doesn't offer you as much right twitch twitch actually gonna be around like here above the shako like twitch supports actually roam quite a bit so you're basically 1v2ing the lane while the twitch is just winning the map so that's why i put him like c tier like he offers he doesn't offer much in laning phase but he offers a lot out of laning phase so that's why he's gonna be a c tier any 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 where do you put any any is definitely a tier i would say above the certain no i mean b tier not a tier i mean it's a solid pick but like i would rather have like these uh supports like karma momo galio fiddle than the annie but like he she's a solid b tier for sure she's a solid b tier so let's just leave it at where like her stun is basically a bread and butter after six her tibbers and you just follow up and you can look for an opportunity in sphere so she's definitely not like uh, a c d f tier but she's not like a tier either so b tier is like a good middle ground milio milio is not that great of a support i would put him in d tier uh would i rather have zyra or milio that's a question right now i think i would rather have Zyra because Milio doesn't provide you that much value like his skills like knockback right his W gives you some range that doesn't matter for you because you're melee anyway right his E is kind of nice because of moment speed and shield but it doesn't offer you much damage so basically you have to like kill the enemy solo while he's just chilling there right and this R you're most of the time not gonna be in his R range because you're just jumping melee range so he's not that good pick with Nyla Lissandra is definitely an A tier, I would say above trash, below Zack. It's amazing support because of this point and click R, right? Enemies are forced to take land, so we have some of disadvantage just because you have Lissandra support, and it's an amazing pick. Silas. Silas is a really, really nice pick, I would say, like, right here, A tier, definitely A tier. Like, it's an amazing support for Nyla, let's be honest, like, we played with Asylus yesterday and we just demolished the enemy bot lane because we got some picks early on. His engage is kind of straightforward and he deals a significant amount of damage. So he can steal so many good ultimates from enemy team. So enemy team has to adjust their draft and we can't pick Malphite or the Silas just gonna literally steal the Malphite's ult. And he will go all in for himself. So yeah. That's about it for the season 14 support tier list. If I missed any supports, feel free to leave a comment below. Also, feel free to leave a comment below. Which picks do you agree? Which picks do you disagree? Which picks do you change the tier list and why? Share your thoughts. Uh, the tier list, of course, is my personal tier list, my personal experience, but of course, the experience might vary depending on the ELO. So, feel free to share your thoughts down below. Anyways, that's about it for this video. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe, and have a nice rest of your day.